In this video, we're taking a look at the Boeing stock. Now, of course, Boeing as a company has been pretty hard hit by the pandemic. Both the company and the stock have been under severe pressure over the last couple of months. And this brings up the debate. Is this a good time to potentially invest into Boeing? Is this an opportunity to get into the Boeing stock at a discounted price? And is this a time when the stock is potentially about to turn a corner? Well, to help you guys understand this and understand whether or not Boeing is a potential investment for your portfolio, I wanna take you through the fundamentals, take you through some of the financials behind the company and help you decide where you should be making a play with the stock. Before we jump into this video, can I please ask you a huge favor? Can you click on the like button below this video? This helps us rank these videos and just by clicking that like button, you help support this channel. Now, before we jump into the financials, before we start looking at all the big details in the actual fundamentals behind the company, I wanted to really just help you guys understand the company structure and also some of the news items and off book elements that are really driving the future of the stock price and driving what's happening with the company and the stock right now today. Now, of course, one of the things that I think is gonna surprise a lot of people when they start looking into Boeing in detail is that Boeing is actually a very diversified business. It's got some deep, deep diversification. And this is something that's not often discussed. So obviously Boeing is well known for the fleet of aircraft that they produce, everything from you know the 777X to the 737 MAX. These are all aircrafts that are well known. And pretty much this is what most people think about when they think of Boeing. But the fact is Boeing has actually got many other divisions, one of which is their defense division. And this covers everything from you know, big cargo carriers to helicopters, autonomous systems, uh, air missile defense. It really is a very, very diversified program. In addition to that, they also have a space program. In fact, they're one of the leading satellite companies in the world. Very few people know that. And then of course, there is their services division. They're also very focused on innovation, dealing with things like analytics, um, and obviously deep, rooted technology in both the commercial and the defense space. So really from a diversification perspective, Boeing is so much more than just commercial airliners. And this brings up the question, why have they been so hard hit during the pandemic? Because with such a diversified business, and obviously the production of commercial airline having been under pressure because of the pandemic, one would think that the other divisions of the business should be doing pretty well. Now, I think there's a couple of news items that we also need to touch on when looking at Boeing. So for example, there is an article out at the moment on CNBC about Ryanair ending all jet order talks with Boeing over a price dispute. And of course, this has been going on for a while now. In fact, Ryanair is not the only company to bring this up. There are a number of companies that's actually backed out of orders with Boeing. So there's definitely something going on with Boeing aside from the pandemic. And if we start scanning the news articles, you'll start to see that there is a definite trend in terms of the management structure coming down to the way the company's being run. Of course, another article that out is out is about Boeing uh, and the Airbus and that they're basically having problems getting their Airbus uh, regulatory stuff signed off. Then, of course, another article goes on to talk about uh, Boeing sprint to keep up with the satellite revolution and pretty much how they're bleeding cash to pretty much keep up with what's happening in terms of launching satellites uh, from a commercial perspective. And then I think one of the last articles I just want to touch on because this brings back to what I'm saying about the management structure. They're talking about how regulators are investigating Boeing's safety culture from uh, obviously a list of complaints by its engineers. And just to touch on one or two things that the engineers are talking about, they're saying that there's a group of Boeing engineers who perform key safety tasks and they've been raising concerns about their ability to work free of pressure from supervisors and obviously that their comments are prompting federal regulators to take a broader look into the company's safety culture. And of course that follows on from a couple of planes that have fallen out of the sky recently and uh, Boeing have obviously had to account for these because a lot of these have been based on new orders that are just come to market. So, you know, with that said, there's obviously a lot of stuff off the books that are driving Boeing's pricing. And I think it's very important to keep this in mind. 
One of the biggest takeaways I've got from this at this moment in time is that there seems to be a little bit of a management culture that just doesn't quite sit well. Decisions are being made badly, staff aren't being treated exactly the way they should be treated, and then you've got customers canceling orders. But let's face it, Boeing is an iconic brand, it is an iconic company, and the chances of them folding up and going away tomorrow is probably pretty slim. So I guess we're gonna be asking the question is, at what price is the right price point to start looking at buying into Boeing. So to help us understand that, I think it's good to look at the financials, the current state of financial affairs over at Boeing. So like I mentioned, the company has been under pressure and of course the stock has been under pressure. And we can see as the pandemic came, the stock just absolutely plummeted. But the stock has been moving upward and then recently it's taken a little bit of a dip. And the reason for this has a lot to do with the fundamentals. Now, if we come down and have a look at the overview of the stock, just to help you guys understand, this is a company with a market cap of 127 billion. The share price 10 years ago, which was September 2011, was trading at 66.96. It's currently trading at 218.17. So even with all the issues that have gone down, everything that's happening with Boeing, everything that's happening in the world in terms of travel, the pandemic, the stock price is still fundamentally way up off its 10 year price point. Obviously, there is no PE ratio on the company at the moment, and that has a lot to do with the pandemic. They're in the red in terms of margin. The equity has slipped hugely to negative 18 billion. And uh, of course, their free cash flow looking equally as bad at negative 13 billion. So now coming down to the year on years, I think we can start to see something I've been touching on, which is that the pandemic, I think, has just highlighted a lot of the issues that have been brought to the fore in terms of the management structure, in terms of the culture within the company, and this is translating directly into the numbers. And there's no doubt about it, the pandemic has had an effect, but I feel very strongly that what the pandemic actually did is just amplify the problems. And if we come across here and we have a look at this, if we go back to the three year mark, we can see everything was looking okay. Not too much wrong. They had positive free cash flow, uh, their net income to total revenue ratios were okay. Everything was you know, looking the way it should be. They had positive equity. And then all of a sudden, two years ago, this was before the pandemic, things started to slide. Free cash flow went into the red, operating cash flow went into the red, net income went into the red and operating income went into the red. And then the pandemic came along and just amplified everything. And suddenly we're talking about gross profit in the red. We're talking about all the other key aspects going much further into the red. And then add the trading 12 months and even the total equity has started to slide. And of course, total revenue is up. That's one good thing. But we've got to talk about these gross profits. We've got to talk about operating income. We've got to talk about net income. We've got to talk about operating cash flow. And we've got to talk about free cash flow growth. None of these are showing any real signs of recovery. And even though we have seen a small little bit of green coming into the charts over here, fact of the matter is all of these numbers here are still in the red. And even though there has been a slight improvement of the two year in the last trailing 12 months, these numbers are still drastically in the red. So this of course leads us to our 12 point fundamental checklist. These are the 12 fundamental questions we ask ourselves when we invest into any specific stock. Now, the first thing we look at is momentum on the share price. Has the share price doubled in the last 10 years? And indeed, it definitely has. Is the PE ratio between one and 25? Unfortunately, it does not meet that criteria. They do not have positive profit margins, so they don't meet that criteria and the assets are no longer greater than their liabilities and they have negative net equity, so we have to mark them down. Then coming at the dividend cost versus free cash flow, they do indeed score a point there, but that's purely by default because there is no dividend on the stock. And then looking at the number of shares outstanding, these have not been going down. And in fact, this is something I need to touch on because if you come and have a look at the number of shares outstanding, uh, this is probably one thing where shareholders can probably hold their breath a little bit. The shares haven't been going down, but they haven't been increasing either, which means that the shareholders essentially haven't been diluted any further. So if there's one glimmer of hope, it is that the shareholders are currently not being diluted. Then if we come down to 
Total revenue, that hasn't been going up for the last three years. Gross profit hasn't been going up. Operating income hasn't been going up. Net income hasn't been going up. Nor has operating cash flow and nor has free cash flow. So pretty much a very, very bad set of fundamentals. And this is reflected as follows. Fundamentals, 25% on the positive side, 75% on the negative side. And so fundamentally, if you're making a decision on Boeing based on the fundamentals, this is probably one of the worst investments you can make. And the fact of the matter is with the price trading, you know, at, at levels which are f frankly out of touch with what's going on with the company, $218. Uh, I just think that the stock is highly overvalued at this moment in time. This is because the fundamentals are not working with the company at the moment. And then if we have a look at the analysts, the analysts are actually pretty bullish, predicting this will go to 274. And of course, a lot of those analyst projections are coming based on the fact that they're hoping travel restrictions will be eased. They're hoping that commercial orders for airplanes will continue and uh, that things will start getting back to normal. But I think it's far from it. And the question has to be asked, and I mentioned this in the intro, if Boeing is such a diversified company, making a play in the satellite space, making a play in the defense space, why specifically are they still under so much pressure? Those two other divisions alone should have at least covered the short positions within the commercial space. And that has not happened. And that has to be a failing by management. And I think if we look at the return on asset, if we look at the return on invested capital, you look at the return on equity, which is non-existent, this speaks volumes of what is happening with the management at Boeing. There's an inability to manage the finances. There's an inability to manage orders. There's an inability to manage customer acquisition. And all of those things are leading to compounded losses. And so I think, Realistically speaking, this, the market is probably not going to let the stock go below 200, although anything could change. And so personally, I think this stock is a no-go. I think Boeing is probably going to drop a lot further before things start to get better. And then, of course, we still have to take into account that we don't necessarily know what's going to happen with the pandemic. So I hope you guys found value in this video. I hope that my recommendation of not buying into the stock and if you are currently holding a stock, potentially selling out of the stock helps you guys make some decisions over your portfolio. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comment section down below and uh, I will try and respond to every single comment. If you did enjoy the video, please click the thumbs up, help us rank and get these videos out to people. And uh, of course, if you are currently invested in Boeing and you're sitting on the fence and uh, you're a little bit indecisive, I really think you should pay very close attention to the fundamentals behind the company because of course, things just are not looking great at the moment. Before you go, I'd just like to let you know that you can get access to all of our courses absolutely free of charge. So there's no fees to pay, no Patreons to join, and all you have to do is visit our homepage of our website and click on the sign up button. Link is supplied in the description down below. Now, you'll get access to our stock investing course, our real estate investing course, as well as some really great courses on managing your personal finances. And of course, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe and join our Money Tribe here on YouTube, you'll get access to daily stock analysis videos, crypto analysis videos, as well as some really great personal finance content. And of course, all you have to do to subscribe is click on the subscribe button below this video. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to turn on notifications so that you get notified whenever we add new content here on YouTube.